Hello, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to the Liberty Report. With us today is Daniel McAdams, our co-host. Daniel, good to see you. Happy Thursday, Dr. Paul. How are you today? Good. Tomorrow's good. Friday. Yeah, Did today's you my that? Friday. Yeah, today's <laughs> yeah. my Friday. <laughs> you, yeah, you won't probably have anything to do, will you? No, I'll sit Or will you crying. do some catching up <laughs> when you don't come for the program? But you're serious. always on call, <laughs> you know right. that. And you're always <laughs> have to preparing for the next program. Exactly. No and rest. taking care of the website and a few <laughs> things like that. <clears throat> so very good. <clears throat> today, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> Well, to start off with, we want to talk about our famous Surgeon General yeah. because he wants to keep the information straight, <clears throat> make sure everybody knows what's going on. So, speech. Yeah. To keep things straight, can control speech. It has nothing to do with the First Amendment because this is national security. Yeah. And this is taking care of the people. This is public health. So they have a right <clears throat> to punish you if you don't use the right language. And that's what's going on there. Uh, every once in a while, people mention about uh, first, first Amendments and whether this is a violation or not. But, but anyway, uh, what they can't stand is somebody that has a little bit of... Uh, popularity with the people yeah uh, like a Joe Rogan oh boy they they don't oh, like they went him nuts. Yeah. and uh, evidently you know usually these far left wingers would love uh, the uh, movie stars and all but I understand this uh, uh, Matthew McConaughey uh, said something favorable uh, you know a little bit objective about about this vaccine stuff and you couldn't just say, hey, buddy, you're not saying the right thing. Let's go on to the next issue. You got to do something and figure out how to punish and suffer and cancel and, and keep you from getting uh, a contract. So that's uh, uh, what immediately the Surgeon General comes in and rebuts Matthew McConaughey over the vaccinating of kids. Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's pro, uh, you know, he was challenging a bacterian. This is an easier thing to challenge. I mean, we challenge it when uh, we, we don't think, uh, when the, the so-called experts in the CDC are saying, well, you know, this vaccination really, uh, yesterday's program really yeah. doesn't work very well. But this thing about kids, to think that you were not even safe in not getting, you know, uh, reamed down, you know, for saying, be more careful with the kids. There's just some statistics that show, show that they don't get real, real sick. And uh, as far as death is concerned, you, I, I imagine, uh, I, I don't have the figures in front of me, but my guess is that uh, there's been more children die from the complications of the lockdown than they have from, from the COVID. And we do know there's an increase in, uh, in uh, uh, suicide and there's an increase in anxiety. I'll bet you there's been some kids, because doctors are too easy to put on drugs, some kid is very, very upset about this mask business and he's sort of trapped. They end up asking the doctor, what to do. well, I'll give you something to, to calm you down. So there, there is all that. So it should be perfectly safe to talk in an objective fashion about about the kids because maybe uh, five percent of the kids surely should have the shot. But no, you can't de you can't debate anything uh, because uh, Fauci sets the rules and that's it. Uh, the authoritarians are there. The approach is authoritarianism it has nothing to do with individuals assuming responsibility and making their own decisions about their own health and their children's health. Yeah, and it was, you know, it was, a, it was a little to do because, first of all, they want to paint someone like Matthew McConaughey. He's a well-known actor. He's considering, they say, running for governor here in Texas. Uh, so he's looking at a political career. Uh, and they want to paint him as some kind of wild, flat earther who's gone off the rails, when in fact the reality of what he said was relatively mild. First of all, he's not an anti-vaxxer. He's taken the vaccine himself, right? The only thing he said is that he's hesitant on giving it to his children. He was asked uh, on, uh, uh, I forget what, what station, why don't you want your kids to be vaccinated? He responded, we go slow on vaccinations anyway. I still want to find out more information. So he's not saying don't take it, don't give it to your kids. He's saying in, in my family, the way we do it is we go slow and I want to get some more info. And that caused, of course, the Surgeon General I don't know, he must not have much to do, but he flipped out, Vivek Murthy. He went on CNN <clears throat> immediately, and they asked him about, well, what about this movie star saying that he's not giving his kid the shot? What are we going to do? And then, of course, he, and we had that first clip. Let's just watch the video of this. 
if we can, because this is what he's this is what he said. If we can find that first that first video admonishing McConaughey, that's it right there. Recognizes number one, COVID is not harmless in our children. Number we many kids have died sadly, hundreds of children, thousands have been hospitalized. And as a dad of a child who has been hospitalized in the several years ago for another illness, I would never wish upon any parent mm -hmm. that they have a child who ends up in the hospital. And the vaccines have shown in these trials for children 5 through 11, they're more than 90% effective in protecting our kids from symptomatic infection. And they're remarkably safe as well. The kind of side effects they saw were a sore arm fatigue. So what I'm So here he's saying a couple of things, A, that are misinformation. The first of all, uh, he's saying that hundreds of children have died and thousands have been hospitalized, and that's factually incorrect for COVID. And in fact, let's look at this first clip, uh, the first uh, picture clip, not a uh, video clip. This is from an article in the Wall Street Journal from Dr. Marty Macari, who's a professor at Johns Hopkins School of Medicine, and Dr. Nicole Sapier, who's a professor at the Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, as well as Cornell Medical College, talking about a study on children and COVID. And it's very interesting. This is uh, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention estimates that 42% of children 5 to 11 have had COVID by June 2021, a prevalence that is likely greater than 50% today. Of the 28 million children in that age range, 94 have died of COVID since the pandemic began, and 562 have been hospitalized. So not hundreds died and thousands hospitalized, nowhere near that level. And of those 94, an extremely high percentage had very serious comorbidities. Very sad, <clears throat> but it shows when you're talking about misinformation, Dr. Paul, and when you have a government official on TV giving misinformation, well, that's perfectly fine. The other thing is the, uh, uh, the bottom of this is, actually just put that back up really quick. I just want to finish out on this from the Macari article is the, um, is the fact that uh, the, uh, the sickness, in, severe illness in vaccinated and unvaccinated children uh, of that age range is virtually identical, so there's no difference in doing it. So, so the Surgeon General getting on McCary, uh, uh, McConaughey's back over saying, hey, we wanna, we wanna back off a little bit, and then citing, and then saying, well, my son was in the hospital a few years ago for something else. Yeah, that's terrible. We're really sorry, Mr. Surgeon General. However, we're not talking about that here. <laughs> right. You know, what is, he, what is he going on about? Well, he doesn't want to talk and, and follow a, peer, a, a, a process of logic. You're not allowed to use logic. But you know, what, what this does, this episode, and what we're talking about here, makes it so clear about raising, you know, answering the question that is raised. Who is responsible for the children? You know, who is it? Is it the state yeah. or uh, is, it the, is it the parent? And uh, it, the, the responsibility for the parent, you know, throughout all of history, it was assumed that uh, the parents are. And uh, in recent uh, weeks, it has been recognized that don't mess with the mothers who think they don't have a responsibility for their children, you know, because they know it's natural. It's been there for a long time. But the, the authoritarians know, and it's been, this has been talked about for many, many years, that authoritarians, you see it in all of the uh, dictatorial society, you know, the, the radical fascist communist people, they get the children early. Yeah, they oh want to yeah. They do it early. So they want control of the children early. But that's, that always bothered me because, you know, the go our government runs our schools. Um, not everyone is bad because we have people in our family that have taught yeah, and dedicated. have done their best. But they, they just don't, um, they, they, they don't uh, re realize that uh, the state does not have this authority. They shouldn't assume it. And, and that's what they want. They, they want the control and we've moved in this direction. You know, at one time uh, when, when I was six, Nobody went to kindergarten. Oh, uh -huh. you were mistreated. You didn't know how to do this. And, uh, and, and uh, you know, there are some now that are the homeschoolers, you, you know, are at a, actually they raise their children differently. And I have never seen anything negative, but it's, it's sort of not conventional. And that is they let them go and maybe they decide 
when the child is ready at seven, yeah. they might push it. But parents do that all the time, you know, for other reasons, like getting to play football and what's your age group. They'll hold back and push, yeah. push forward. But uh, the state, uh, the state has moved in, and uh, years ago, it used to be when you were six, you became uh, eligible to go to the government schools, yeah. the public schools, which was uh, a, a blessing and, and uh, where you learn about the Constitution and all. So yeah. this, this is, uh, uh, but now it's moving on. Now you have kindergarten, you have pre-kindergarten. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and this is not to say that every, because even the private schools have kindergarten. There's nothing wrong with kindergarten, but it, but it's, to me, it's so symbolic of the state getting their clutches in. And uh, we do know that even, even in those very early years, uh, the environmental uh, things that are d dictated to, I know first graders, they start conditioning these kids. So that to me is, who do you concede it to? Are you gonna concede it to the uh, attorney general and, and let him dictate? Uh, or are you going to give a parent a pass? It doesn't mean that if a parent's, uh, uh, you know, very much mistreating and physically harming their children, that's a little bit different, and that's not what we're talking about. Yeah. Because we're talking about who's responsible for their health, who's responsible for their safety, who's responsible for raising them as they see fit. Well, you know, in the in the UK, they have similar situation. You know, very draconian situation over there with the lockdowns and everything. Well, here's a little clip from an article by Joe Pinkstone. He writes for the UK Telegraph, and he's citing a new National Health Service, that's their National Health Service, analysis uh, of, of children in COVID. Let's look at that next clip. This is from, uh, is it today, I think? Yeah, uh, Joe Pinkstone, and this is fascinating. Only six healthy children with no underlying health conditions died as a direct result of catching the coronavirus during a 12-month window, NIH, NHS analysis has revealed. So all the lockdowns, the masking of kids, forcing shots in the kids' arms, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We're talking about six kids in the entire United Kingdom who died from this disease alone. Yeah, but, you know, that's blasphemy. Yeah. And, and, you know, if you put that on some some people who control the Internet, you can get banned Canceled. for that. Yeah. This is bad information. And uh, we have to control uh, information, and they're in charge of that. They, they're, they're in charge of the message and in charge of what science is. You know, science is not there for debate. Uh, it's a political decision. Science is decided by our government, our attorney general, uh, our uh, uh, surgeon general. Yeah. They may make this decision, and uh, that's how they get to control. And they have to scare the people. But they've spent a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of effort, and a lot of fibbing, and there's a stronger word for that, yeah. about why this is so dangerous. It's a national security issue. I mean, we have to make sure our military has all their shots. National security, national security. Yeah. And, uh, and, and they propagandize, and uh, then it turns out now, what, what about Italy's report the other day? 97% of the people that were listed dying from COVID were, did yeah, die from yeah. COVID. Not and I think alone, when yeah. the dust settles and this is all sorted out and people go back, that should all have been done before they decided what to do with these patients, not afterwards. It's better than not having it done at all. But yeah. the, uh, there's going to be some energetic people that will finally, they're there and they're accumulating information. It's just that it's very difficult time spreading the information they believe in. Of course, uh, we have a few uh, individuals that are friendly toward what we're doing, yeah. and they're doing a good job in trying to, you know, sort out the uh, difference between falsehoods and the truth. And of course, when the smoke does clear, they're never going to say they're sorry or admit they were wrong. Oh, no, they're yeah. going to move on to the next thing. Never. I want to just do one final thing on this Surgeon General. I think the guy's a kook, to be honest with you. Uh, this is something from Steve Watson from Summit News. Here's what he's. Uh, here's how he spends his day. The Surgeon General of the United States, put up this next clip. This is how he spends his time. U.S. Surgeon General issues a toolkit asking Americans not to share misleading memes about COVID. Basically, if you don't say what we tell you to say, you're going to get in trouble. Let's take a look at uh, This is just an example. This is what the guy spends his day doodling on, uh, telling you memes are fun. They're created as a joke, but people started resharing them thinking it was true, et cetera, et cetera. Cherry pick statistics. Be careful that websites look professional, but they're really not. They're misleading. 
et cetera, et cetera. You better think the way we tell you to think, otherwise we're gonna cancel you. This guy's not a doctor, he's not a surgeon general. He's a, he's a, he's a politician, you know? So he, he's emphasizing the point that I make at least, ideas have consequences. And I always think about the positive things out there. You want people to look at ideas and understand them. But in this case, uh, it's it's not, uh, you, you can't be supportive and think you, that you should spread and, uh, and uh, promote bad ideas. And that's uh, happening. That's so much what ha is happening. But of course, the answer to this is who, who is to be the sorter, the sorter out of good and bad and right and wrong. And that, of course, is in a voluntary society, you have open debate bait and uh, you get the government the government has to stay out of it because that's nothing more than gobbling up taxpayers money to be used to propagandize and to uh, and to uh, you know promote their position and to make the people who disagree enemies and that's why we see uh, oh it's good they, they you know the IRS has been known to do the oh I shouldn't talk about be careful <laughs> be careful the IRS has been known <laughs> to take examples of individuals who say they would never touch them you know these people they're so innocent it's for hundred and fifty dollars yeah. and and uh, you know maybe they have uh, maybe they're a religious person or something and they go the full way like oh, that yeah. so that's uh, generally what they do. that's what they'll do if they find anybody boy they hit them hard and uh, that's that's control of the thought processes and that of course is the is the big problem is is sorting out the truth and and uh, it can be done people do this voluntarily they have throughout centuries and yeah. still truth does exist it does permeate the system except we have our ups and downs and uh, people tend to be gullible and uh, especially when they're scared if they're scared of COVID and they're scared uh, that the Russians are coming the yeah. Russians are coming they're back at that again now you know we have to we have to put military ships in the Black Sea because yeah. the Russians are coming so we have to be there oh yeah well that's I guess, I guess that's more than several hundred miles away yeah you know, the Black Sea but we got our Navy there yeah. Uh, we have to keep an eye on them. Well, Tucker Carlson had some goofy member of Congress from Ohio uh, on, uh, I think, yesterday talking about how we got to go over there. They took over Crimea. And Tucker said, why do we care? You know, <laughs> okay, whatever. But let's move on because you mentioned yesterday some soccer players and some sports uh, stars uh, in Europe particularly who mysteriously seem to be getting ill from unusual illnesses. Well, this next clip, this is um, of, of the Minnesota Vikings guard Dakota Dozier. Uh, and it's interesting, he was hospitalized due to COVID-19. Well, first of all, that's, that's terrible because, he, you know, he's, these guys are in top shape, Dr. Paul, as you know. Uh, but the interesting thing about it is something else. And let's do the next clip just to set it up. The coach, Mike Zimmer, noted that he had to go to the emergency room, uh, but he is fully vaccinated. One of our players that was vaccinated had to go to the ER last night because of COVID, he said. It's serious stuff, so I don't know. Like 29 guys are getting tested because of close contact, including myself. Just do what we do. And that's, I'm, I'm glad that the guy is now stable. Uh, but the thing that's strange about it is a few things. First of all, he got very sick, obviously, to go to the ER. But second of all, he was fully vaccinated and he got COVID and he got very, very sick. That's not supposed to happen. Maybe it's one of those one in a zillion cases. I don't know. Well, you know, uh, Joe Rogan came to his defense, and uh, of course, I'll just give them again a chance to say, oh, Rogan, that's the guy that takes horse medicine, yeah, you know, yeah. that kind of stuff, to demagogue it. But uh, no, th this story should wake him up, but then they'll come back with statistics. Well, it, it is, fortunately, it, it isn't everybody that gets a, a vaccine, but it's a lot more than they'll admit. Yeah. It, it's, it's not like one or two here and there, because I think they better keep statistics for a long time to come, and, uh, and, and which means that there's, it's gonna be difficult following uh, patients and the symptoms that they have, you know, maybe maybe some of these diseases won't show up for five or ten years. So it's uh, it's uh, it's really a shame that that happens. Uh, but I'm glad that uh, you know, there's a little bit, bit of attention given here. But believe me, the people who disagree with us are going to do their very best to discredit anybody like this and uh, i guess they just go nuts if there's a popular sports figure that does this you know yeah and uh boy when they can destroy uh 
the reputation, and even get a person fired, even if he's a popular and a good sports figure, uh, that is powerful politics, and I'll tell you, because most of the time people say, get out of our way, we want to, you know, we want to, uh, you know, just go back to a normal life, um, but they just gear it up, and all of a sudden, Europe, the cases are exploding again in Europe. Yeah, yeah. Well, we wanted to talk for a second about Israel, and I think it's just a short one, but you know, Israel has always been fascinating because, A, they locked down tight, not once, not twice, but three times. They had a mandatory vaccine. Everyone had to take it. Then they had to take the second shot. Then they had to take their third, and now they have to take their fourth shot to be considered fully vaccinated. So you would think that country would be COVID-free, but it wasn't. Despite having all of these vaccines, of course, it went through the roof just a month or so, and now it's down a little bit. But the Israelis are holding war games against the virus. They must be using very small guns, right? <laughs> but they're wargaming it. The thing is, they aren't looking at, they aren't stepping back and saying, well, what countries did something different than we did that seemed to work? Maybe Sweden, maybe somewhere else, uh, maybe Florida or something. No, they're looking at doing the exact same thing they did before that hasn't worked uh, and doing it again. More lockdowns, more crackdowns, more masks, closing the borders, more shots in people's arms. And it's really, it's, it's just amazing to, to see this. You know, the fact that a few have called attention to this, uh, you know, they have obviously uh, been criticized. But uh, one person said, but apparently the very existence of herd immunity is now a dangerous conspiracy theory. <laughs> they're conspirators. So they're dismissed because of, uh, of uh, they, they just disagree with them. <laughs> of course, that's one thing that we have worked on. I think that's one of the key things that anybody's interested in this subject is trying to promote the understanding that there is such a thing as natural immunity. It's a scientific fact. The knowledge has been available to us, uh, you know, for many, many years. And there is some suggestion now with a full discussion that uh, people would might be taught that maybe this, this the, the problems that we have today, the vaccines don't work for a special reason. Maybe it's a maybe it's a scientific reason that if one, two, three or four uh, vaccines don't work, maybe it doesn't work. And there are some vaccines, you know, some viruses don't respond. Yeah. That's why we don't have we don't have a vaccine for a cold. Yeah. And uh, colds, especially for somebody that's been, you know, uh, pretty sick and have other problems because you you know, if you have these other problems and you just have a cold, well, you know, if you're weak, it might turn into pneumonia. Yeah. You know, definitely. people would say, well, you know, I had this cold, but it went into my chest and uh, it go into your chest. That means th that person could have it, but they will say that will still say, you know, it was uh, it was COVID under yeah. the circumstances we're talking about. Yeah, and that is the thing, and you've said it before, but even Fauci said it at the very beginning, is this is going to be tricky to do, a, to do a vaccine against the coronavirus because they mutate and all of these things, and so many people have said it, but they've been drowned out uh, lately, and I think that's what the Israelis are now facing head, uh, you, know, f f you know, in a full frontal way, that, that this thing might not, you can, maybe you can't catch this tiger by the tail. But um, the next article we're going to do, Dr. Paul, and this is also from Summit News via... Zero Hedge. This is Paul Joseph Watson. Despite vaccine passport schemes, COVID cases are surging across Europe. And this is a big deal because Germany is going through the roof. The other countries, most other countries in Europe are going through the roof on COVID right now. And here's an interesting quote. A late autumn surge in reported COVID infections. <coughs> There's a key in there somewhere to the whole thing. But the main point that we would say is that Serious lockdowns across Europe, serious vaccine passport, mandates from here to there in Europe, and still it hasn't changed the seasonal rise of the virus. Well, the natural solution to this is they're messing up the statistics. Yeah, you know, dare they. so maybe uh, they can cancel uh, the concept that Sweden is part of Europe. You know, they're offshore a little bit, so they're not part of it. But it is true. They're the ones who have been the most enlightened about uh, having parents make more decisions and having a discussion on the best way to treat these, this disease. And, uh, and they're doing quite well. But that's not enough to wake people up. That uh, yeah. they, they have to just come down harder and harder. And then they, they don't hit back 
with science. They hit back with patriotism. You want to kill other people. You know, and what you're doing is, uh, you, you know, you're, you're a criminal. You yeah. know, you're the criminal because you, you won't take these shots. And then, oh, how about these people that end up in the, in the emergency room? How about the people who die, you know, from yeah. who, who's the criminal there? Of course, we're looking at a much bigger picture and slightly different than what they're looking at. We're looking at the fact that a problem exists, is very serious, who's in charge, who's responsible in a free society, how is this taken care of? And it, does a free society ignore the fact that you don't take care of a problem like this? And is that the reason you have to have the government do it? Well, it just happens that a few of us believe that uh, taking a bureaucrat who loves the limelight to go and dictate to others is uh, not a substitute for a freedom of choice, yes. People in a free society uh, with uh, a lot less government intervention, they can make some mistakes. There's no yeah. doubt about it. Sometimes they go out and uh, they uh, do dangerous things and they uh, drive when drinking and they end up killing themselves and all yeah. this. But the whole thing is they think that uh, the, the, the people cannot uh, be, be allowed to make these decisions. It's, yeah. it's somebody that it has a humanitarian instinct to take care of these people it's always to do good and if you don't do it you're unpatriotic yeah. you know that's a disgusting argument because uh, I would think uh, I like to think that patriotism is when you're willing to in a polite and direct manner challenge your government yeah exactly <laughs> well from that same article and this just 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 underscores how what they've done objectively has not worked and here's a quote a choir concert in Germany that allowed only fully vaccinated or recovered people to attend, banning those who are unvaccinated, but even those could pr pr provide a negative test, that resulted in a COVID-19 outbreak that infected at least 24 people. So even the most strictest measures didn't have any effect. I have a couple of clips here uh, on Europe and the rising cases in Europe. Let's look at this next one. This is Germany. Germany has the most draconian restrictions mask mandates, and COVID passports in Europe. This is Dr. Eli David. I think you may even have a quote from him. And look what's happened in Germany. With all the draconian measures they've taken in Germany, look at cases now here in November. What they're doing clearly is not working. Let's look at the next one though, uh, and then I'll send it back to you. This is fascinating. Number of COVID-19 patients in intensive care per million people November 10th, 2021. Look at all these countries up there. And look at the very, very bottom, Sweden. <laughs> the lowest of all on the list. You'd say, well, there are a lot of people vaccinated there too. Yeah, there are, because they had the choice to do it. And a lot of people chose to do it, but they weren't forced into it. They weren't forced into vaccine passports, mass mandates, whatever. They had all the choices. They made the right choices, obviously, because this whole thing should be measured by success, <laughs> not by following the orders. Oh, that's so old fashioned. <laughs> that's so old fashioned. <laughs> well, you know, um, the article we're quoting from is Paul, Paul Watson from Summit News, but it's also on Zero Hedge. But there's one quote that he makes in this article that restates exactly what you've been saying. And he's, he says, one place where COVID cases and deaths remain low compared to other European countries is, guess, Sweden, which never imposed a hard lockdown and has no vaccine passport scheme or mask mandates. Wow, that is radical treatment. Yeah. And no complications from there. You won't see any football players over there being sent to the emergency room because of a complication from a shot they don't even know if it ever works. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, I've got a couple of just final things as we close up. The first one is related to what we're talking about because we have kind of had this theme of seasonality through this and that used to be a four letter word. If you <laughs> mentioned that there's any seasonality associated with this particular coronavirus, uh, you were canceled and you were blocked out. Um, but I wanted to play a clip. You wouldn't believe who has resurfaced. Gavin Newsom has come back. He's back uh, on stage. And here he is talking about something very interesting. I think we want the first 57 seconds of the third of uh, the, th yeah, there we go, thanks. Reading my mind, thank you. Yeah, we want. Uh, this is hard for me to say because Gavin. it makes you even more unpopular than I am in many camps. 
Uh, last year at this time, we all were bemused and confused when we saw a few states starting to see an increase in COVID. It's as if we learned nothing in the last year, the coverage of Colorado. It's somewhat inexplicable, they say. We really don't know why they're seeing an increase in Vermont and New Hampshire, why the Northeast is experiencing an increase. California is now experiencing an increase. Well, we know why. There's a seasonality to COVID. <laughs> He's it's not particularly yeah, can, can turn difficult that off after now. a couple of years. That's the key word that he says in yeah. this. First of all, he doesn't look that good to me, Dr. Paul. I'm not a doctor. He, does, he looks a little bit shaky there. But he says, after all this time, after everything that California and the other states have done, he says, well, I guess there's a seasonality to this thing after all. Let's look at my, my, my next clip, because this is just a couple of months ago with the Washington Post's fact checkers. We know they're always right. Let's look at this clip on seasonality, seasonality of the virus. This next clip is from the Washington Post. DeSantis blames Florida's surge on COVID season. That's misleading, experts say. This is just a couple of months ago when Florida had an increase in the summer, which is its seasonality for the virus. So a few months ago, you could not say that without being canceled. Now you can be the California governor and say it, and you're praised for noticing what many people have noticed years ago. Could the word arbitrary fit in here? <laughs> you, the information that we get from some of this media, it's just arbitrary, whatever fits today. Yeah. And how many times have we pointed out where Fauci's been on two sides of one and you're saying the same day, yeah, yeah. or the same speech, yep. he, he will say it. And that's just to confuse the people. Yeah, you wanted to mention something about this here? Yes, I, I do, because it just is a general point, but it's also specific in UK. UK vaccine mandate may force 123,000 people out of healthcare sector. Wow. So we have a shortage. The nurses seem to have caught on, and the health workers, uh, you know, they're not. They claim, you know, they don't hide from it. Uh, a lot of them do not support the vaccine because they see the problems with it. So uh, people have quit and people who have said the wrong thing, they get kicked out, they're threatened uh, and they're afraid they might lose the job. So they're moving on to other things. So the interference by government, the manipulation and the intervention of the planners is such that it's made it very precarious. And it's not only shortages in the medical care, it's, that's one field where it's very bad, but it's in a lot of places like truck drivers. Yeah. You know, there's various reasons why they, they leave and go looking elsewhere but uh, right now there are other opportunities and and they don't uh, they don't want to gamble uh, when the regulations and the uh, mandates are so direct so people are very nervous about this so here they have this major problem I guess, I guess it's it's not just in England I mean it's in this country oh, yeah. too there are yeah. shortages and uh, and yet uh, Biden sort of likes this idea but if he, if you're in a business that only has 99 people uh, you're not under the same uh, principles of, uh, of your freedom as, you, as if you're in a company that has 101. Oh, that changes, yeah. your, that changes your ability. Like rights are supposed to be, you know, inalienable and belonging to an individual. But it all depends on which group you belong to and which lobbyist is uh, working for you. Yeah. So they said that uh, if, if they force 123,000 more people. So uh, when, you, when you subsidize unemployment guess what you get more, more of, of it, it. and, and uh, the unemployment uh, you, you know that has happened in the last two years has been the, the damage has been softened but that's just going to disappear because people lost and instead of everybody being on the street looking and taking the job that have to take uh, what they did they got big checks from the government yeah so uh, but the now all of a sudden people don't realize this but the checks are shrinking. Yeah. What do you mean? They don't ever shrink checks. What about the uh, Social Security checks? They're going up. Everything's going up, and it's not shrinking. Yes, but the purchasing power of the money they have is shrinking, and that's why people are really hurting, and that's all this kind of mischief does. It makes things much worse, and, uh, and, and yet they're still saying, well, you know, it is a mess. People aren't working. They're not producing, and they don't want to go back to work. 
what we need is more money and deficits don't matter. We told, we learned that in college. Yeah. Deficits don't matter. So we're going to send more money out there to keep the economy going until until the money loses enough value where people just quit. Yeah. And right now, well, I think we're approaching that. And, and the uh, sad part is that people don't realize it that uh, the inflationary cycles, you know, might, may, might smolder for a long time, then they start up and they get increasing. People recognize it, but the conclusion is very, very rapid. And that's, uh, that is, we're not on, I don't think we're there tomorrow or the next day, but eventually that can happen. And that is when the political turmoil begins and uh, it's a lot worse than what we have now. That doesn't so, sound good. Uh, do you have a, well, that's Statement what it's all picture, Dr. Paul, because we always talk about the elites. There's one rule for the elites, of course, and then there's another rule for the rest of us. Uh, Ivy Getty is the daughter of Gordon Getty, very wealthy people. Uh, they're the ones that bankroll Newsom's campaign. They got, she got married to some guy over the weekend, I guess it was. Nancy Pelosi officiated. I'm sure she's a very <laughs> holy priestess, uh, officiated. But that's beside the point, because this article, uh, of this next picture, let's look at it, the final picture here. This says a lot because here's the top one. Here's your kid in school. Look at him all masked up, horrible. Here's Pelosi at a swanky wedding. This is the wedding I'm talking about. Look at everyone down there, packed in tight, not a single mask in sight. And now I'm sure if we could see some of the servants there, they would force them to wear a mask. But the elites down there hobnobbing, no masks. You poor kid in school, put the mask on, kid. Terrible. And, and that is so symbolic of the authoritarianism. If you don't have the mask, the mask is bowing. And uh, also, even more so than bowing to the state, uh, because hopefully we will have a little less than masking. But the big thing is the um, ID, the yeah. passport. Yeah. Thing. That is still alive and well. And it still is just utterly, un, un, you know, unbelievable for me on how international it became. Because all of a sudden, people know what the international passport is. You know, the other day, and they can use it as a political club. So uh, the other day, you know, we decided, well, they're okay, they're all, they all have a mask, but uh, they'll come in. Or we'll have a group of people that are just illegal and they're coming in by the tens of thousands and they, they get put in ho fancy hotels and they never even get checked. It says at the same time, if you're an American citizen trying to come back in. So the passport is a terrible political weapon, but it all, always has been. But it's just a shame that the people go along with this because that's what we have to resist is the whole idea that the government is controlling our every action. And uh, that's the opposite of liberty. And I think enough people still are very much aware of this and uh, they, they know there's an answer to it. Yeah, I'm all done, Dr. Okay. Paul. Okay, and, and that, that answer obviously is not complex. That means that uh, the intention of the founders was try to establish a nation that recognized and respected personal liberty and the responsibility of the individual was then uh, to take care of themselves and their family and not to have an authoritarian government that eliminated the principle of volunteerism. Because in a free society, it's imperfect. There are always going to be problems, but things are done voluntarily. It would be almost opposite of the way the COVID uh, endemic uh, has been taken care of. That is not what the founders intended would happen, uh, you know, when, the, when there would be an illness. So it's, it's, a, it's a shame because uh, I, I'm saddened because I think the answers are known and they're not complicated and they're good. And that is just per, per, uh, you know, you know, protecting liberty. And uh, it's a shame that we can't do a better job in delivering that message because if you want a more peaceful society and you want a more prosperous society, if you want a healthier middle class and you want to have people living more peacefully within and avoiding all this controversy and all this political stuff going on and the crookedness that goes almost automatically with, with the politicians. Uh, the only way to do that is for individuals, the more the merrier, because it takes a lot of individuals to accept the principles of non-aggression, that you have no right 
You have a right to your life, and you have a right to keep what you earn. But you don't have a right to tell other people what to do with their life. And you don't have a right to take their property. Just because somebody needs or, or wants something, uh, that does not justify the government from going and taking it, no matter how humanitarian he is. Because he's so, he, the, the do-gooder and the left, uh, as well as many right on the right, the politician who are the authoritarian, are, have no qualms about uh, using force to, uh, to control people and control money uh, as they see fit for humanitarian reason. Guess what? I think they are the enemy of humanitarianism when they use that as an excuse that they are going to take care of everybody and be fair and equal. I want to thank everybody for tuning in today to the Liberty Report. Please come back soon.